May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Among the great 20th century philosophers, Simone Weil was the one who placed attentiveness, the ability to be alert, to be diligent and vigilant at the very center of the ability to teach and to learn. According to Wey, attention represents the supreme act and virtue of the mind and the heart. Even when we fail to find the correct answer or solution, an hour of good, attentive study of mathematical, literary, artistic problem places us humbly but firmly before the truth and reveals to the mind those vicissitudes in the quest for the truth. Attentiveness, of course, is not limited simply to intellectual pursuits. Authentic friendship, relationship, is built on careful attention to the words, those expressive and profoundly articulate silences, isn't that wonderful, articulate silences, and the sometimes barely perceived needs of the other person. <coughs> Prayer, I would like to propose this morning, is the ultimate act of attention as we deliberately make the choice to perceive, to hear the contours and listen to God, to one another, and to our own hearts and spirits. Attention, said Simone Weil, Simone Weil attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. This does not come easily to contemporary minds, perhaps even less so to our younger generations raised on constant cell phones and texting, iPods and iPads, individualistic technology of all kinds let alone, of course, the barrage of images, advertising, publicity, that often has as its one aim and goal to distract, to beguile, to engross us from our realities, <coughs> from our friendships, from our relationships, our conversations, and even our true selves. Or even more frightening may be the reality that we actually center our life in this ever-changing and shifting world of product, commerce, purchasing, the very latest and trendiest products. The 40 days that Christ spends in the wilderness in today's Gospel lection points to a very, very different world. A world where people are able to come away, to come apart, from the bustle, the busyness, the frenzied entertainment and distractions 
of the everyday, routine, mundane. There are still, thank God, places, spaces, seasons, and communities, very often in convents or monasteries or retreat centers, or on a lonely stretch of the coastline, or even on the mountaintops, where silence is still observed and valued. Indeed, silence is not merely observed, but silence, stillness, calm, quietness, reticence regulates the very pace of life. The work that has to be accomplished, the way, but the way that the day, the week, the season, the liturgical year is observed and unfolds. <coughs> There is an enclosed convent not far from the Hollywood freeway where the Dominican community of nuns of the Monastery of the Angels, with which many of you will be familiar, each sister takes it in turn to keep perpetual vigil in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle of the altar, not just for an hour a day, but 24-7. Every week of the month, every month of the year. They are profoundly attentive and attuned to the tempi, the cadence, the measure, the pulse, and the rhythm of the spiritual universe, as well as this city's rhythm, which today, of course, almost rises to a frenzy. <laughs> <clears throat> Only God knows what grace those nuns have achieved in their so-called work. Attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity that we have. Another example in this place, which many people who come here uh, tell me, is also an oasis of calm and quiet reticence, stillness, silence. Another example in this place is that at the end of high masses and solemn masses, we have no organ postludes. That is a sort of sign that there is no entertainment not that there ever should be entertainment in liturgy anyway. You are not here to listen to some half British, half American, <coughs> theologically trained mind. You are not here to, as T.S. Eliot says, you are not here to verify you are not here to carry report. You are not here to justify yourself. But you are here to kneel in a place where prayer attentiveness has been valid. At the end of our high masses, no organ postludes but rather there is the deliberate, the conscious space for us to remain in our seats 
or on our knees in thoughtful attentiveness to the presence of the holy, the sacred, the divine, that permeates this very building. Our Lenten liturg liturgies in this sacred, beauteous house of God, well, what do they express? What do they say? What do they articulate? Even in the silence, what is articulated? What's going on? What does it mean? They all mean being attentive to the divine, and the eternal, the rhythm of God's heartbeat that pulses through every kind gesture every instance of paying attention to one another. In that moment of embrace, when we know someone is grief-stricken or is in pain, in that reassuring and kindly smile with which we greet one another, or at least we ought to greet one another. In love, in grief, in loss, in gain, enlightenment, and in discovery. That is what the purpose of this sacred place is all about. The attentiveness, not just to encounter God, but for God to encounter us. <clears throat> R.S. Thomas, the Welsh priest and poet, in his poem, But the Silence in the Mind, <clears throat> and I must confess, as I was reading this poem, are illuminated manuscripts in the Lady Chapel came immediately to my mind. The painstaking hours and attentiveness that is lavished upon these wondrous, beautiful works of art came immediately to my mind as I was reading this poem. But the silence in the mind is when we live best. Within distance of the silence we call God. This is the deep calling to deep as the psalm writer, the bottomless ocean, we launch the armada of our thoughts on. Never arriving, it is a presence then whose margins are our margins that calls us out over our own deep fathoms what to do but draw a little nearer to such ubiquity by remaining still in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.